Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, it's going to be a match between Sky and Last here on Fighting Spirit. Two incredible players, both featured recently on my channel. I was super impressed by them both, found a game with them playing against each other. And let's go ahead and get right on into it. Top left hand corner is the Red Protoss player, it is Sky. Sky versus Jadong, you guys. Check it out. Check it out. It's recently posted on my channel. And in the bottom right, the Blue Terran player. It is last. Going under his name, Gosu. Which, again, I kind of feel like if you start out your career going under the name Gosu and you're not very good at Brood War yet, it, it's kind of dumb. But last might be the currently the best Terran player on planet Earth. So uh, I think once you've reached that pinnacle, you can go ahead and use the name Gosu and nobody's going to get mad at you, right? Right, I think that's how that works. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me on the channel. Appreciate it. Did you know you can get one extra Brood War game per week? One per week, four per month. We're just donating to me and pledging one dollar a month at patreon.com slash falcon paladin. Again, just one dollar a month. That's all it is. Bam, extra Brood War. Five a week, you guys. How much Brood War do you get from other channels? Hmm? Is it five casts a week? I'm not convinced it is. Anyway, a bit of a discussion going on between these two players. I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at right here, because it's all Korean characters that are not being parsed correctly by my English client, or the StarCraft client in general. I don't know whose fault it is. If I install this in Korean, would it actually display? Maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe it totally would. Anyway, is that uh, the barracks here? The footprint is so big and so identical to a command center. Every time somebody builds a barracks first, ugh, part of me is like, that is absolutely a command center, but no. Not a CC first here, and there's not going to be a Nexus first up here from our Protoss friend Sky either. I'm liking Sky, I really do. His APM isn't crazy. Look, he's not spamming, but he is good. I fully expect him to give Last all that he can handle right now, and maybe even beat him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch these things in advance because I don't have the time. I barely have the time to cast as much as I need to to get my channel to a place where it needs to be with the number of casts I post every week. And also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Falcon Paladin. So, uh, and also, by the way, I do have a full-time job, and I have three kids and a wife. So, um, it's a really busy life here for Falcon, but you know what? Keeping busy keeps life interesting. It's much better than being bored. I am not often bored, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing to experience. New stuff all the time. New StarCraft games all the time. New stuff on stream all the time. My kids are constantly surprising me. They're growing up. They all have strep throat right now, which is another adventure. In being a dad, I'm trying desperately to not get strep throat because I was just sick a couple weeks ago. I really don't want to be sick again and miss more days of casting. It's hard to catch up. So uh, let's just say I'm not kissing my kids goodnight when it's their bedtime right now. I think they'll probably recover from that uh, from that danger. The danger from the, the emotional distress, I guess, that that visited upon them. Singularity charge on the way from Sky. That factory is on the way from last. Nobody's expanded yet. Kind of surprised by that. One base to one base. Nobody has even really tried bothering walling off here. Look at this. Checking. I guess checking for bunkers over here. Could you fit a bunker there? I'm not sure that you could. Maybe here. I don't know, man. Bunker footprints are big. But anyway. SCV does manage to get in. It takes like eight shots to kill an SCV if you're a Dragoon. So... SCV is going to escape because he's got his little jetpack on his back. Nyrum, nyrum. Sees the timing on the expansion, says, okay, that thing just got started. I'm not super far behind if I expand starting like right now. See that? See how that looks like a barracks on that first little stage, both in size and in the three pillars? And, you know, anyways. You're on my side, aren't you? Aren't you all on my side? You're on Falcon's side, I think. I think you are. I believe it. Oh, also, did I mention there's a merch store? If you're interested in merch, check it out. Uh, just Shopify Falcon Paladin. There's a link in the description and at the end of the video. And just get shirts and hats and mugs and jackets and hoodies and all sorts of great stuff. If you have any suggestions of stuff you'd like to see, let me know too in the comments. And we'll make it happen. We're pretty easy that way. Yeah, you're not getting in there. Sorry, Scouting Probe. Not going to happen. Tank cruising on out here and not really worried about a whole ton of Dragoon pressure. Just because, again, he knows the expansion is late here. And as a result, there aren't really... That many Dragoons that can be out anytime soon. Probe transferring down. Good. That's a great Maynard transfer. That's a pretty... A uh, little early. Tiny bit early as these probes try to head on out there. Dragoon does not to engage... Does not want to engage, rather, with Marines and Tanks. And actually not going for Siege Mode. 
Instead, going for Vulture Speed first. This feels like an aggressive play. Vulture Speed indicates you want to do some run-bys and kill some probes. Siege Mode indicates you want to defend against the Dragoon attacks that might come your way. But yeah, Dragoon Count, fairly good right now. They're going to show up, and I don't know. I don't know if he's going to regret not having Siege Mode here. Ah, oh, Probe got in for a scout. How on earth did you get all the way in here? What a sneaky, sneaky little probe. Throws down a pylon in the middle of the mineral line for the Terran. It says that is going to mess up your mining pathing. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's an evil probe. It's exactly how he sounds. I know. You're like, I can't hear that Falcon. Well, once you've cast 2,000 StarCraft games, maybe you can start hearing probes talk too. Hmm. Hmm. Am I coming up on 3,000? I kind of feel like I am. It's a lot, you guys. It is a lot of casting. Every day. Every day of the week you get StarCraft. Goodbye, Vulture. This is not a good opening for last, I don't think. I like he's got spider mines out. Really annoying to deal with. You have to wait for the observers to show up before you can really move out on the map if you're Sky. But yeah, it's 50 to 46 overall supply. Protoss player's got a third base. Warping in, defended with a couple Dragoons on that ramp. Well done. And Dragoons holding the front door here at the natural base too. So, as is tradition, what it really comes down here for the uh, Terran player is can he get a lot of tanks? And for the Protoss, it's can we kill those tanks? Somehow, do we use Stasis from Arbiters? Do we use Storm from High Templar? What do we do? Is he st did he sneak Siege in? I'm just having a hard time understanding why he doesn't have Siege at the six and a half minute mark of this game. He's not even researching on that machine shop. So he must have snuck it in when I wasn't paying attention. Whirr. Set up in Siege mode, tank. I need you to do this for me. There is a dropship around about here too, interestingly enough. You think it'd be up maybe with the... Terran units across the map, but no. Not really. Vulture run by. No. Dragoons shut that down. Thank you for trying, but not going to happen. Third base about finishing up here, and it is way ahead of last attempts at a third base. Last does not have a third base even under construction anywhere. He's going for more factories because, of course, he's going mech. What else do you do against Protoss? If you try to go Bile versus Protoss, they will storm you into oblivion. You think Storm is good against Zerg? And it is, by the way. But it is even better against a Bioterran player. I've passed 2v2 games where it necessitates basically that one of the Protoss has, or one of the Terran players has to go Bio to deal with what a Zerg player on the other team is doing. But then the Zerg's teammate is a Protoss and he just goes Storm, and the poor Terran is dodging Storms like crazy. But everything in there, the Marines, the Firebats, the Medics, are so low HP that Storm just tears them apart. It is a tragedy of the highest order for sure. That's a third base, yeah? Yeah, that's the third command center. But look, it's just now under construction, and the third base for Sky, my golly, is almost... I mean, it's done, and it's saturated. It's almost fully saturated, I think is what I was trying to say there, but... You know, it's 12.08 a.m., and I have work tomorrow in the morning, so my brain is going to do some crazy things. Just how it is. That is the Falcon experience. Look, Siege Mode just finished. I just saw it finish there. So Siege is just now done in eight minutes. That's amazing. That's actually kind of incredible. He hasn't really needed it. There hasn't been any Dragoon pressure. It, it meant that he can't really pressure either. Siege is fantastic at, well, you know, sieging, which is inherently an offensive move. If you siege something else, you're attacking them. Uh, siege mode as a defensive thing. It's kind of weird when you think about it. Uh, it's kind of like Liberators in StarCraft 2, where they have a defender mode, but it's also really good in an offensive position too. So... <laughs> Probably more often used in an offensive position than a defensive position. Kind of the same story here. Tanks are more used in a defensive position than they are in an offensive position overall. I mean, I think they are used offensively quite a lot. But observers hanging out. Doo, 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 doo. Can't see me at all. I really can't help but think if this was Flash that these observers would be dead. But they are staying alive. And that's what they want to do. The longer observers stay alive, the more information Sky has and the better able he is to deal with what the Terran player is working on. A third base floating on over, throwing up a supply depot at the front of this ramp, coming into the third, recognizing that it will mess up the pathing of any Dragoons that try to come up here. And honestly, going up a ramp with Dragoons is just, it's a weird situation anyway. They get stuck, they block each other on the ramp, they wander around down here and get shelled by tanks the whole time. So uh, you don't really want to go up ramps with Dragoons unless you absolutely have to, or if you've wiped out all the tanks on the high ground first. Guess you could do that. Yeah, once again, just engaging into this thing with tanks. Uh, doing some Zella drops on the tanks, though. Not bad. Not bad at all here. Tank down for sure. Dragoon's attacking on in. What a fantastic play. Out of sky right now. Just shutter stepping his way through. Bum, bum, 
picking off tanks here and there. These tanks are not in siege mode. They recognize the threat of their goons getting right on top of them. And you know what? Doing pretty good for themselves. These tanks are. They don't have any attack upgrades, so that doesn't really matter. No attack upgrades for the Dragoons either. But yeah, these Dragoons are all going to die. It was a decent attack. They're going to be extremely annoying and wander into the main base here like they own the place. Don't, don't just casually bring it on in, you and your three friends, to kill vultures. No spider mines for you. Just kidding. There's one. Oh, they picked it out, though. And then tanks coming out of uh, factories. Defender's advantage really a big deal right now. Dragoons attacking on into the third base, but his tank responds quite nicely there. And Spider Mines getting picked off by more Dragoons. That is a very heavy Dragoon pressure play right now. Out of Sky, and I can't help but think it's facilitated by the vision that he has. He knows exactly where the tanks are. He knows how many are being produced. And he just, he saw his, uh, he saw his moment and he seized it. Immediately going for carrier production though after that. And the question is, does Last see that? Does Last know there are carriers on the way? I don't think he does, as I don't see well, there's an armory coming in. So maybe he's going to start building Goliaths as soon as he can. But for now, it is just going to be Vultures, which, again, not as good against carriers as it turns out. But still pretty good at running around and throwing down spider mines and annoying and harassing probes and whatnot. Fourth base warping on the left side from Sky. He has really not been bothered by last at all in the first 10 minutes of this game, and that's really good. I don't care what race you are. If you get left alone effectively for the first 11 and a half minutes, you're going to have a good time. Tanks, you have upgrades yet? Yes, plus one vehicle weapons is done. Thanks for asking. Falcon, you're the best. No attack upgrades at all here for the Dragoons because obviously we're going carriers. Oh, just kidding. Plus one ground weapons just got started. Right as soon as I was saying that, Sky, come on, man. Vultures have speed, and they're going to try to get up this ramp. Is that Dragoon actually holding that ramp by himself? Wow. Okay, not anymore. Goodbye. What spider mine play? That was great. Can they not get up here either? Oh, there's a double layer trap there. Dragoon holds the line, and then buildings hold the line. Ow. I cannot believe these observers are alive. Last, you have to see these observers and kill them. I don't think any of them have died, and Sky's been getting all the information in the entire universe he needs from them. I don't think he could ask for any more information about the Terran player than he's getting right now. It's weird. It's extremely strange. So yeah, Charon Booster's coming on in, five Goliaths at a time. He knows what's up. And I know a lot of the comments are going to say, how come we don't see Valkyries or Wraiths versus this Protoss player? And the answer is, I don't know. I honestly don't know why we never see it. Why Goliaths are the meta answer to Sky Toss. But they are. They have good range. They hit really hard. They do great against carriers. If they can hit their bodies, a good Protoss player will fly the carriers in areas where the Goliaths cannot hit their bodies. And are forced to engage with the Interceptors, which is really, really good for the Protoss. Hard to do. Uh, Rain is very capable of it. Some other players are not. And we've seen uh, carriers not do as well against Terran, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that Sky is capable of doing that. His APM is still really low compared to what Last is, but I feel like he's winning. He's up 167 to 145 supply. He's picking off some of the SCVs here at the natural base. The Goliaths are forced to respond without their Charon booster upgrade. Oh no, it is done. The blue, the blue stuff is there. Meanwhile, counterattacking Last up the middle side of the map. Spider Mine's getting laid down. Providing a bit of a buffer here for the tanks as they set up in siege mode. They're going to try to harass this front door on the third for Sky. Oh boy, carriers wandering over. I gotta stop. That's a really bad habit that I have. I say wandering a lot. No, they're not wandering. They're purposefully flying in this direction to take down these tanks. And it might actually work. These Goliaths are like, wait up! Wait for us! We need to kill you! Why aren't you waiting for us? Stop it! Another carrier shows up. Protoss army going for the counterattack. Tons of dragoons, but can I just give the tanks are here? But the tanks are not down here, and it's a great move. I'm liking this from Sky. Third base might go down before it gets saved, and it does. Absolutely dead. Not enough interceptors to take down these tanks before the third base gets sniped. But guess who's here? A hundred dragoons. A hundred dragoons are here. I know it's not a hundred, but it's a lot. And they're going to do pretty darn well against these tanks. The Goliaths do better than you expect against Dragoons. You'd expect them to suck, but they're not bad. It's just that they're getting directly hit, they die, because they are a little bit um, a little bit not tanky. As they're not tanks, they are Goliaths. Uh, Goliath, a bit of a misnomer. They're not that big. Uh, SCVs here to try to deal with this. And they're actually doing pretty well, as SCVs are surprisingly good against Dragoons. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Bam, 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 bam. Additional. 
units coming on in. So the plus one attack is now done for the Dragoons, making them a little bit scarier. And Sky decides it is time to retreat. We're going to bring the carriers back in and try to wipe out this natural base. Maybe snipe this command center out of the sky. No fourth base for you. I like the red. I like the red on the interceptors. It's kind of pretty, honestly. Engineering may focus down. I'm not sure why that's your priority target, but you know what? Fine. You can kill that. Missile turret here. Great targeting there on that one. And losing interceptors is not good in the long run, just because you will eventually run out of money in the longer games. But... I think, in general, you don't have to really worry about it on a map this big as Fighting Spirit is. So, lost this third, but he's replacing it. Sky's fourth base is happily running. Sky's fifth base is warping in and last can't get a fourth. You guys, this is bad. This is bad for Terran. I've heard it expressed before that no, it's not that Terran is overpowered versus Protoss. It's just that uh, Flash is overpowered versus Protoss. And as a result, it makes Terran look overpowered versus Protoss, but it's not unless unless Flash is involved. So Flash is not here, it is last, but he's pretty scary nevertheless. A whole ton of tanks show up at your front door. You're gonna have a bad time. I don't care who you are. And look, it's not really like we're going mass carrier here either. Got a good number of Dragoons in the mix, working with some High Templar and Storm, which again, I feel like is required versus these tank and Goliath lines is getting some Storm off. Sure, it doesn't instantly kill a tank, but one, but two storms will take it down, and they clump up quite nicely too. Usually like this. Man, more counterattack. He's just like, I can't engage directly with this army. So how's about we go for the base race? This looks like a base race. These carriers are coming in. The dragoons are coming in. The Terran army is at the front door of Sky and wrecking that nexus. But guess who's here? So much Protoss. So much Protoss here out of Sky. The Goliath count is getting whittled down quite nicely by the carriers. They're not taking body shots from the Goliaths exactly with it, how they want to be doing this. The Goliaths are trying to get angles, but they can't because there are rocks in the way. Dragoons firing on everybody from the other side, too. Loving this. What a great pincer move this is. And last brought his entire army home to deal with this. He does not want to base race today. Thank you very much. Sky is just owning this situation, though. Look, Command Center trying to come over here and expand to a fourth. No, says Sky. This is my home now. Natural base in trouble. SCV is getting rocked. Refinery picked off there, too. Goliath count insane, but look at the carriers. They're refusing to engage. They're like, we don't have to take body shots from you at all. In fact, we are all fairly healthy. Some of us have taken a little bit more damage than others. What about coming in here? Unless he's trying to focus on the armory, and it looks like he is. He's going to deny vehicle plating or vehicle weapons. One of the two. Let's see if we can focus it. Ah, it was plating. Vehicle plating gets denied. Fantastic job there by these carriers. One carrier went down. Was that the carrier deaths down? Nope. I'm hallucinating things. Auditory hallucinations, you guys. is not a good sign. Five kills. Uh, everybody's building interceptors, so I can't see the kill count. That's what's the problem with Reavers and carriers and stuff is they don't give you that. Still no, huh? Four on that one. Five on that one. Building more interceptors because more keep dying. DT is in production from Sky. I mean, technically, it's 150 to 121 supply in favor of the Terran player, but... He's on three bases, and the number of bases we're seeing from Protoss is a lot. Some Vultures managed to sneak on over, try to shut down this fifth base attempt down left. And yes, the natural base got wiped out, so that was a good victory uh, from last. But overall, I just feel like the income is better right now for the Protoss. His carrier control has been pretty much insane. Look at him refusing to go down on the same level that the Goliaths exist. Always high ground, always behind some rocks over here. Never just flying right at the top of the Goliaths, because that's how you die. Anyway, DTs handle the vultures down here in the bottom left, so probes can go to work at this fifth base. Fourth base still happily running. I don't even know if Last knows about this. And it doesn't help me to do this because this only shows me what Last is currently able to see instead of what he's aware of. It's a limitation, honestly, of the uh, of the vision setup there. Yeah, that's what happens. If you get on top of those Goliaths, one of your carriers will die really fast. And just trust me on that one, you don't want it. You don't want that to happen. At all. Alright, Goliaths pushing on up. <laughs> I don't know, it's one of my favorite sounds is Goliaths attacking with their guns. It sounds cool. It just takes me back to the days when I was playing the campaign back, you know, when I was 15, 16 years old. Great, great memories for sure. And yeah, this is the problem with the Terran army. 
is suddenly they show up with a hundred Goliaths, and the Goliaths are sitting here at 3-1. It should be 3-2, but again, that armor got delayed and denied. Wraiths? Oh, we might... Oh, Wraiths are in production. Hey, you guys might get your wish about this. Uh, remember how I said Sky was up because he has more bases than the Terran player does? That is true, but he... I don't know if he can handle this. He's got to be hiding the storm. Where are the High Templar at? Storm is done. Uh, High Templar are... They might... There's one. Maybe there just aren't that many. Man, I... Oh, he took the middle base. That is the sign of someone who is supremely confident. Is taking this middle base. Last. Feels like he's got this thing, guys. I don't know if it's true. This game is not over yet. And... Guy has actually managed to get up an overall supply 160 to 160 ish, which is nice. But his fourth base is under attack by a bunch of tanks with plus three attack. And these cannons are not going to be able to hold on at all. Dragoons trying to come over and deal with this thing if they can. The siege at the front is still a thing, not really moving from last right now. He is not able to really spare much APM on it. He just wants to make sure there's a contain. But in the meantime, this base is alive and it could be threatened by these tanks. And here come the carriers and the zealots and the DTs. But there is detection because there are missile turrets present. Storm! There's the storm on the tanks, weakening them so Dragoons can take them out more easily, but still not easily, I would say. It's just more easily. The Goliaths doing great jobs getting body shots on those Protoss carriers as they're able to do so, and the carriers flee and all the Dragoons die because they really can't stand versus these plus three attack on the uh, on the Goliaths. It's only plus one ground attack here. That's all we're looking at right now. Meanwhile, carriers don't have their full complement of interceptors, which is bad. They want it. They want to have their full complement. Look at them building, though. Plus one attack is done for the air. And just too many Goliaths. Too many Goliaths. It's not really... The raids, I don't know if they're even necessary right now. 155 to 120 supply. Sure, the income is good for Sky. And sure, I guess the fourth base is here. Last is like, I can't get a fourth base in a traditional location. Just take the middle one. It'll be fine. And by golly, somehow, someway, it is totally fine. Production facility is getting rocked now by Goliaths and tanks. Not what you want to see. Rotos player in a lot of trouble right now. The carriers have to engage here. They're still rebuilding interceptors after that last battle, though. They don't build that quickly, you guys. And yeah, he's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to engage with these Goliaths. They are destroying my interceptors. And if they can get shots up on my carriers, they die extremely fast because they have the plus three attack. DT's in production from these gateways. Trust me on that. Production tab says so. I don't know if DT's can get in here and there's not a scan in time, but, I mean, there are commsat stations at all of these command centers. And as a result, there's plenty of commsat energy for the DT's that are here now. And there's the scan. DT's do whittle down a little bit of the Goliath count, but not really all that much. And suddenly it's 161 to 1 at 12 supply in favor of the Terran. He is producing wraiths. Where are these wraiths being hidden, everybody? Are they just right here? It's kind of right here, everyone. Let's see what they do. Yes, yes, I know the Goliaths are wrecking all the production from Sky up here. And Lass is just looking like an absolute boss right now. He is earning the Gosu tag. Carriers. God, that's a good number here. That's five. Five seems like it's enough, but again, you can't take the direct hits. Oh boy, that carrier seems to be in trouble. But does manage to get out of here, and you know what? Whittling down those Goliaths. Fantastic job. Meanwhile, Wraith's not engaging with the carriers instead of getting shot at in the face, providing high ground vision to cannons and almost dying. I mean, the important thing here for Sky is that he has starports running here. Stargates, rather. Ugh. Stargates running. 159 to 118 supply. Just wraiths and wraiths and more wraiths and more goliaths all the time. Recognizing there's not really a tech switch here. It's just basically carry your production out of Sky, and I think it can handle that. I mean, it's storm time. There it is. Storm time. Get some stuff done, but not really. That was actually a pretty... Impressive split there on those tanks. All these probes are down. Fifth base, Sayonara Protoss, fifth base. Now suddenly we're down to two bases mining for Sky. And officially, 
a lot of mining in the middle here for last. He's got a new base on the right side. He could transfer some workers on over to if he wanted to. The Goliaths are here. Look at the wraiths, though. Oh, man. The wraiths are doing some work. Cloaked wraiths, you guys. Hey, everybody in chat, you got your wish. The wraiths came in to finish off the carriers. And that's all she wrote. There's a bit of some chat here, but that's it. The carrier group is dead. Wraiths doing what they were built to do. Handle capital ships like carriers. Sky taps out and last is your winner in 25 minutes and 31 seconds. Hey, hey. Wraith production versus carriers. First time on this channel. And everybody in chat can just breathe a sigh of relief and mark that off on their Falcon Paladin Brood War cast bingo sheet. Finally got to see Wraiths going after carriers, and by golly, it worked exceptionally well. It worked really, really well. Oh, amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff there. Just beautiful, beautiful Terran play. I mean, again, Sky got up to additional bases there. He was on five bases, almost six. One last couldn't get a fourth. And then Lash just wandered, got up there with some tanks, took out the natural base, handled the carrier counterattack, continued producing Goliaths, took the center base, which God sent here, double refinery and so many minerals, made it happen, and never really bothered by Sky at all in that match. And then the Wraiths, he kept in reserve to chase down the carriers, wipe them out, and that was all she wrote. I mean, that was just a great game plan. Got the upgrades he wanted, got into the race to deal with the carriers, got the Goliaths to deal with the carriers, and the win goes to last. Are there actually any Goliaths on the ground right now? Yeah, some of them are wandering over, but a lot of them died. There are not many Goliaths remaining here for last, surprisingly, but he didn't need that many because all the carriers are dead. Ha <laughs> ha! How about that? 203,000 points for Gosu, 202,000 for Ivory Time. Units killed fairly even, 238 to 297 in favor of the Terran player, who again won, by the way. Buildings raised, about twice as many raised here for last versus Sky. And look at this, income, more minerals mined and more total spent by a significant margin here for Sky. But it didn't matter, just because he had the right composition. The Goliaths had the right composition to deal with the carriers, the race with the right composition to do with the carriers, and the thanks for the good composition and with vultures for everything else. So yeah, 417 units produced by Sky, 392 by Last, and overall more units killed just by the fewer units produced from the Terran player, and that's kind of the efficiency that you want to see from Mech, and that's what it is. All right, cool, that's gonna be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. Call it slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.